Oh wow. Welcome to Dog Star. Each week we sit down with a star of hip hop and R&B, and this week we are sitting down with Gabriel Murgo. How you doing, sir? Thanks for coming through. Man, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling great, man. How about y'all? Feeling good. Just feeling peachy, good. Yeah. yeah. Feeling lucky oh, yeah. to get a, a hour of your time here to catch up with you and to pick the brain of a of a genius, of a madman, of one who wears multiple <laughs> hats. Truly uh, an inspiration to us, your work ethic hey, alone. So thanks I for sitting down y'all. with us. Shoot, y'all motivate me too. You <laughs> know what I mean? Seeing you guys have everybody in the city up in here, I'm like, oh yeah, I got to get to work. Oh, that means so much. Thank yeah, you, Yeah, appreciate yep. it. it. For those who don't know, uh, Gabriel Murgo is the G- Mr. G-Nice TV. Yeah. The yep. host, the CEO, the mastermind Indeed. behind it all. And... uh that's super cool. So you're on your bio. It says journalist first. <laughs> do, you, do you feel like a journalist? Yeah, cause uh, that's like what I how I started out. You know, I'm still doing it. I'm still writing articles. You know, oh, like writing right articles. It. Yeah, um, that's why I went to college for. I was a communication major. Whoa. You know, with the intentions of like going into broadcasting, becoming a sports analyst. Sick. You know, always growing up watching ESPN in the morning before school. Did you, play, a, did you play sports? Yeah, I played football growing what? up my whole life. I got a scholarship to play football out here, so. What? Yeah, so that's how I came out here in the first place. Whoa. Yeah, but um, went to school, um, was in journalism and film, so I was into film as well, but not as much as journalism. I, that was my, like, my skill set. And, um, yeah, uh, when I was doing the G-Night stuff, um, it was just like picking up a camera, recording stuff. That was cool and all that. But I was like, how can I bring a different flair to what I'm doing? Yeah. And when I went from just creating content as a YouTuber and stepped into full on trying to become a f- media company, I was like, okay, now I got to hone in on my, my writing skills and, and continue to write um, pieces on people and things in that nature. Because even when you're doing interviews and when doing your research, it's no different than when you're a journalist getting information from people, trying to do your homework on people, yeah. trying to put uh, put things in order so you you know how to go about the interview and things of that nature. So, you know, uh, you know, I'm a writer, journalist, host, co-host. That's so cool. You know, Have you always, like, things. been interested in writing, like, even as a little kid? And then you just kind of, that was the best subject matching up with the interests? Or? I mean, you know what's so funny? My middle school, eighth grade teacher recently uh dm me on my instagram she was she was going through my instagram she was like oh my god like you're doing real well i'm proud of you she was like it's so funny how like you're doing media and you're a journalist because (laughs) you were always good at english and you were always good in writing like my teacher used to always say this you're my professors that was like you got a great paper but take it to the writing center get it touched up a little bit (laughs) and it's gonna be it's gonna be crispy clear because the teachers would be like you're a really good storyteller you could write but you write like you talk. Mm, woof, uh, <laughs> yeah, and I he, guess in some context that's bad, but it's like in my favorite <laughs> books, my favorite authors, it's like the tone of the writing is huge. Yeah. So it's it's awesome you're able to find somewhere, because like in your mind, you're like with sports articles and stuff like that, like that's all the tone of the, the author and stuff. No, so for I'm real. glad you didn't get discouraged with that because, nah. yeah. You definitely have a, a like a confident voice in what you're doing with G Nice, and oh yeah, I feel people gravitate yeah. towards yeah, that. they gravitate toward that confidence and that positivity too that you guys truly exude over there for sure. Yeah, so appreciate it, man. Is yeah. there? A, I was gonna ask where where does that positivity come from? Was it something you learned from an early age or a, an experience man. that occurred? Uh, Life, you know what I mean. Uh, growing up in San Bernardino, like. I grew up, like, pretty good, you know what I mean, middle class, you know, area and all that. But my environment was, you know, nothing but gang-affiliated, you know, a lot of prostitution, drugs, things of that nature. And, like, all the schools that I went to had that, you Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, most of my friends were from that. Most of the, you know, people I played football growing up with, either their uncle was from there, their dad, brother, whatever. So... And us growing up in those areas, like, it's bound to you being friends with, you know, a lot of these people. You know, I didn't really get to see all that until middle school. I started to really see how it was really, you know, how, you know, things played out around mm-hmm. in the area. Because you can't be clueless of where you're at. Right. You got to be street smart. You got to know how to move around. You know what I mean? So 
uh, at an early age, I was blessed to have like my, my cousins who were from certain areas or whatnot, always looking out for me. My brother, I'm a twin. I have a fraternal twin brother. So that's like, how wow. he gets so yeah. much done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Fernando, that's my brother. Love you, fool. And um, but yeah, we always like we always had a good group of homies around that always took care of us. Big homies that looked out, always made sure people didn't do shit to us. And if you know things did. Happy, we, we had to handle that candle. You know what I mean? We either, you know, how to fight or do things to get back home. You know what I mean? But uh, but good role models. Good role models around. Sports kept me out of a lot of trouble. But early on, like, I seen violence. You know what I'm saying? Like, I seen violence in my house. You know, my mom, she got arrested for a 10 murder. You know what I mean? Whoa. Yeah, she she got arrested for a 10 murder. She stabbed my dad in the chest. You know? And, uh... I'm grown, so like a lot of that stuff is like we 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 passed that. My mom, she been out for a long time. She she was she didn't do too much time or whatnot. My dad actually like didn't really press too much charges on it. And uh, I mean, they back together now, five years strong. I mean, you know, they, they made it work out. Wow. Whoa, yeah. Wow. But seeing that and like experiencing that and just the toxicity built up before all that, being in the fifth grade, going to sixth grade. And then your area is already like that. So when my mom got arrested, it was just my dad raising this. Mm. So it was kind of like he'd be at work all the time and it'd just be me and my brother at home, my sisters. And then it'd be like, well, we ain't going to stay at the house. We bored. We'd go outside. And when you go outside in the area where it's kind of, uh, you know what I mean, you, you get to exploring. And so me and my brother got to exploring real early. And <laughs> we got a lot of stories, but <laughs> I'll never talk about it on camera, but, you know, it's just the lifestyle of San Bernardino. And um, like I said, I was blessed to have people that looked over us and, and made sure we were straight. And um, I think that's where my positivity comes from. You know what I mean? Seeing a lot of violence real young, like real early, uh, seeing how things could pan out in certain situations. Uh, you know, I, I got friends that are not here. You know what I mean? I got friends that's doing time. I got friends that are, you know, want to, make situations happen for themselves, but can't because they're lack of resources. You do what I'm right. saying? So um, I just want to be that one person that can be the light for my friends, my people, where I come from, and um, show them that you don't have to go that direction. You could go this way. And if you go this way, you know, you eventually start pouring back. And, and that's what I'm on, man. That's the mission. The mission is to get to a position to where I'm able to successfully get back to my people because I understand what people go through out there because of how it is, you know? It's a, just an unfortunate situation, but I, that's just where my positive, positivity comes from. And there's a lot of love. Just because there's a lot of uh, bad stuff going on doesn't mean there's not love. There's a lot of love out there. You know, there's a lot of hate too, but you got to always oversee that BS and just, you know, appreciate and, live in the moment with the people that love you. You know Definitely. what I mean? And that will push you. Can you talk about the the pull more towards organized sports versus the pull towards the streets? Like, yeah, uh, who who really called you to start playing ball? So when my mom got arrested, my dad needed to find something for me and my brother to do. Oh, yeah, okay. Because he was, you know, tired of us getting in trouble at school, right. staying after school, getting into fights. Still working, working. Yeah, and um, so my pops, well, we, we was already playing football before then. Oh. And then, like, after when she left, he honed in on making sure we stayed in sports. Because mm. there was one year I didn't play, and he was, you know, he got mad I was skating and doing other stuff. But before she went in, we got to playing football in fifth grade. That's when we was starting to uh, like get into the summer camp and then we were already getting ready to play and then that's when my moms went in and then we started uh actually playing I was we was in junior peewee together and stuff like that and then uh yeah I remember uh when I went to the football organization I saw people from my elementary school people that I, I went to school with Whoa. so we was already in cahoots with certain people and then when we started playing over time, you realize that the people you go to school with, you're playing with, the people around the community you're playing with. So a lot of those people's parents started taking a liking because they're like, oh, that's my son's friend from school or mm -hmm. whatever. So we got close with some coaches real early. Sonny Babel, one of them, 
um, his dad was my football coach, David Vara. No yeah, way. Yeah. His pops <laughs> was our coach. Rest in peace, aunt. But, uh, yeah, he was our coach. His auntie, Christina Vara, she was our team mom. And me and David, we was actually pulling guards. We was linemen at first. Oh, yeah. and both then, of y'all. That's so cool. Yeah, my brother was like a safety wide receiver. And shout out to my cousin Marcus, you know, Baby Earth. He a producer at the IE. Um, his dad, Coach Hayes, uh, Marcus Hayes, you know, that, man, that's like unk now. But he coached me since junior American all the way through high school. And in my senior year in high school, we won uh, the first ever in school history CIF championship. So it was like, it was like, it was big that, time. Yeah, that's yeah. huge. I mean, uh, can you tell us anything about the, uh, the celebration afterwards, perhaps? Of, of the CIF championship? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you want to know the truth? Man, I didn't even go and turn up, bro. I was beat up. I, I oh, had a, I, had I suppose. A, Left it on the field, yeah. Because, like, I was already injured playing with a separated uh, uh, AC joint from, oh, like, the playoffs. What? And I was still balling, though. Uh -huh. But, um... So it was like recovery time. Yeah, when yeah. the game was over, I went home. My dad had Chinese food. My family was there. My homies pulled up. I was just laying low. That still sounds like, food. That sounds amazing, though, yeah. And do you think some of that dedication, that teamwork has applied to your work ethic today and to the, the yeah. collaborations you're doing across the country, across the world? So we always talk about this back in the IE, me and the homies. Um, the reason why I'm so connected with a lot of people is because of sports. Because a lot of us played football growing up together. Uh, we know each other's family members from different organizations yeah. that we played against, and we followed each other's careers for so long. You run into each other in high school. Oh, you was that one dude from G All American. Oh, that's crazy. You <laughs> you at Cajon now. You one of the best, you know, and you you have that respect and you have mutual friends. And then the, the the IE small, bro. Like we party at the same places growing up. So you would run into people from different high schools and party and turn up and like start going to each other's schools and stuff like that during people either ditch and go to different schools or people would just go to each other's like uh night parties on the weekends and whatnot. Mm. But um that's how I know a lot of the artists, because a lot of athletes transition to either music or they're still athletes. Mm. And that's how I know all the athletes, and that's how I know a lot of the artists. That's why I got my hand in a lot of these NFL yeah. uh, you know, interviews, because I know a lot of these people's relatives, you know, cousins, family members, whatever. And, or I know the artists off of just me playing sports with them, or my, my big cousin might know uh, one of them or whatnot. So, you know. That yeah, if that answers your question. Uh, that no, <laughs> yeah. that and then some. That, that that's so cool that it's it's been ingrained that early and that that network has spread all from having a love for for the sport, having yep. a passion, that dedication. Yeah, but but yeah, to answer your question fully, the the dedication and all that, where that how the, football and all that shaped me to doing what I'm doing now. Yes, because. When I was at high, in high school, um, either after school you get to work out, and or in the summers you would either have to work out or you're you're just chilling. Where we're from, if it's the summer and you're just chilling, it's a whole lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, the friend groups we had, you know, like I said, like some people were in, in the streets and some people uh, just was on some other you know what I mean? And, or some of us just weren't on, but just, excuse me, or things just came to us. You know what I mean? And you, you know, you don't, you know, it's not like you asking for it. Things just happen it's just sometimes, there. you know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, what I would do is I would work. Um, I, I've been working since I was 13, knocking on people's doors, asking to cut their grass, do tree stomp, roofing, whatever it was to make a dollar, bro. I was making bread early. And so I was working all through high school, middle school. And in high school, I was working at Big Five Sporting Goods. And I was also working at school cafeteria. Whoa. So all the money I was making, I would pay uh, my boy Gary Walker, uh, get your mind right, best feed IE. Shout out to Gary Walker, former Baltimore Raven. Sick. Now he's one of the top uh, trainers in the Inland Empire. Um, I would train with him and my coach, uh, Coach Chaddick, doing MMA. And I would train with my Uncle Ronnie. Uh, you know, shout out to my Uncle Ronnie doing CrossFit. Him and Jared at CrossFit, at Whoa. Grove CrossFit and Rallies or at X-Fit Comedy Sports. 
So I would train with them, bro. My schedule was crazy. Like, I would mm. wake up at 5 in the morning when my dad would wake up to go to work. I would go with Coach Chatty to the MMA gym, do 40, 50 minute, like, like AMRAP workouts, like like MMA workouts, real Whoa. fast, conditioning type stuff. Right. You know? And all that, I would assume, before school or before normal work. Yeah, and that was that was summer. Summer, before right. Before school, right. we would alternate the schedule a little okay, bit. Okay, okay. But summer was like five in the morning, cool. hit the uh, MMA gym, go home, shower, eat breakfast, relax. Then at 11, 30, my Uncle Ronnie will come pick me up in his truck. We'll go to the CrossFit gym, be there for two hours. Mm -hmm. And we would do, man, the warm-ups were, were warm-ups whooped you. Mm -hmm. The whole workout <laughs> whooped you, and then the conditioning and whooped you. But, bro, it was, that's what kept me disciplined. That kept me on point. And then after training with him, I'd go to Gary Walker in the evening and do uh, field work Whoa, for football. So okay. I would do, I would do my conditioning in the morning. I would do my lifting in the midday, and I would do my field work at the end of the day. So the whole day I was out the way, like, and people knew that's what I was on. Mm. I was either on that or I was getting money, right? You know, and a lot of the homies respected that, you know. Had did that, uh, you know, bulking up of the schedule? Did that help your time management moving mm -hmm. forward? Uh, you know, away from the sports, more into the the journalism. Or even classes in college? Man, college, man. I, yeah. I was at the best student, but I got through. Yeah, what was it like leaving? Because you grew up and graduated high school all in the Inland Empire in California, but then came to play football out in Minnesota? Yeah, And that's so, how you ended up here? Yeah, so I played a, an all-star game. And the first ever Inland Empire versus San Diego all-star game. And... I was playing, we won the CIF that year, so my coach was the OC for the IE team. Wow. And one of the coaches from Linfield Christian High School in Temecula, Coach Burns, he I think he had won the championship that year for his school, or I think he just got selected because he's one, he's one of the best defensive coordinators and head coaches in, in the IE. He's respected. And so he was our DC. And Sick. like he coached in the NFL, he coached college football, like D one, all that. So like he's connected and respected. And um sorry to interrupt, we're sitting down with the also connected and also respected Gabriel Murgo, uh CEO, host, mastermind behind G Nice TV, but, uh, behind all of it over there and across the the whole country. Exactly. Follow uh Gabriel underscore Murgo and follow G Nice TV. Um Check out all the stuff we've got going on. We'll come back. We'll talk about college. Uh, follow us, Dog Star Podcast. We'll be right back. Bow wow. Bow wow. Bow wow. Welcome to Dog Star. Welcome back to Dog Star. Excuse me. We're sitting down with G Mer, uh, Mr. G Nice TV, Gabriel Mergo. Mergo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A man of many names, a man of many hats. Yes, sir. And. and after you. I was just going to say, uh, <laughs> finished off high school crazy, doing football your final year, uh, winning, doing the all-star game, uh, training like crazy. You get at least a partial scholarship, full scholarship to come out to uh, where in Minnesota? Yeah, so I got a, what is like a partial scholarship? I would say they pay like three years worth, like Mm, three years worth of tuition. Wow! And I had to pay like the rest, but it wasn't that bad. No, that's um, good. Yeah, I got, I got, I got blessed and got some taken care of already. So nice. Yeah, but um, out here at St. John's or where? St. John's University. Yeah, Tight. it's a Division three school right over here, up in St. Joseph, Minnesota. Well, Collegeville, Minnesota. It's a CSBSJU. College of St. Benedict, St. John's University. Oh, so Benny's, girls Johnny's. Can't, yeah, Johnny, Johnny's, Benny's and all that. Um, F the Tommy's. I was going to say, St. have Thomas. you played in any Tommy Johnny yeah, games? Yeah, St. Thomas K. You know, they know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, over here in um, the girls' campus is on St. Joe. The boys' campus is on Collegeville. But the classes are co-ed, you know. Hmm. And I think now they're trying to evolve and make it to where people could live on both campuses. So Right. But yeah. yeah. No. So football there and you said 
or I was going to ask you, what was it like moving away from like all that structure? It sounded like you had senior year. To, uh, were you the only one you knew who came out here? Uh, so when I had took my visit when I was in high school, um, I had made some friends from like Florida and like Cali. Nice. One of my boys, uh, Swiss, he had, you know, shout out to my boy Swiss. He plays for the Canadian Blue Bombers hey. uh, in Winnipeg, Canada. He's from Marriott, Marriott High School. Uh, Vista Marietta over there in Temecula from the IE. Mm. Um, he went to St. John's with me too. And um, my boy Dex and Hodge, he's from Florida. So we all took a visit together at the same time. We met each other. Then we went back to our high schools in different states, whatever. And we were texting each other. like Double checking. You like, commit, you're you going? Commit. Yeah. And um, TJ, Dex and Hodge, we call him TJ from Florida. Um, he, was, he was the one texting me the most. Like, well, I know you ain't made your decision yet, but I'm already enrolling, so I'm going to put you as my roommate. I was oh. like, oh, this dude's funny as heck. Like, <laughs> right. like it's because, honestly, I was waiting because I did have a D1 school interested, mm. and I was waiting on the situation to play right. out. It never played out, so that's when I was like, all right, you know what? I ain't going to go to community college because some, some of the people in the JUCOs around the area where we're from, like, they still get distracted from what, goes on in the city because you're not far from home. You right. know what I mean? And you're an adult now, so it's like you can't move the way you used to move in high school. You're moving a whole different way now. And I was I don't want to do with that. Yeah, so change I, the environment. Yeah, so I said, I'm going to go as far as I can. And I did that. Went to St. John's and whew, my first year, boy, I was depressed. Yeah. I, I, my homesick? Fam, homesick, mm. everything. Man, I was, you know, like far away from home. My brother, I never been that far away from my brother, mm. you know, and like that's my, like me and my, my twin brother, we're like this. We're still like this, you know, but we was with each other every day. Every, every day we went everywhere, did the same, we had the same friends. So even leaving them behind, it was hard. And then um, uh, coming out here, just it was a whole new. It was a culture shock. It was a different environment. Wow. Uh, I didn't really understand how to communicate a certain way with people. I'm like, I'm just keep it real blunt. I never grew up around a lot of white people like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, there was only like a fraction of white people around me, and like you had to go to like the burb burbs or on the east side of Highland or Redlands to really be in that area to grow up with them. You know what I mean? So right. when I went to St. John's, it was a lot of white kids. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, like, these kids don't understand me. Mm -hmm. I don't understand them. Yeah. They're looking at me weird. I'm looking at them weird. Uh, I'm taking things personal because, mm -hmm. like, where I'm from, I'm very blunt. And, like, certain things you do, we kind of take it a certain way. So I'm, I'm checking stuff. And my friends from, like, Louisiana, like Florida, they're like, bro, you doing too much. Chill out. Mm. Like, oh. this ain't the West, bro. Like, mm. and I'd be like, no, like, you got me, you know what I mean? But I mean, glad that you had some football friends there to, yeah, to keep you kind of uh, at, at a mellow pace. They did. They, and I, and I always tell them all the time, like, if it weren't for y'all, I would have been took off. Oof. Like, they're the reason why I stayed. My best friends out here, they're the reason why I stayed. Adrian Flournoy, Dexon Hodge. J Jacob Christian, Jalen Steven, you know, uh, Robbie Austin, like, shoot, the list go on and on. I got a whole, a whole lot of brothers out here, you know what I mean? Wow. But, uh, yeah, like, after a while, when I got adjusted to being out here, I honestly started to love it, and I started to enjoy it, and I, I found peace within growing and understanding that life is not always going to be the same. You got to go through different situations and paths in life to grow in a sense and me being in Minnesota in a rural area where it was like the country near mm -hmm. you know y'all know that it's far from the city bro right. and for anybody doesn't know it's up by St. Cloud but not St. Cloud yeah it's Wade Park all that it's like the same road but for the most part detaching myself from San Bernardino seeing the world for what it was it was like wow okay growing up with this mentality was not normal and I started to evolve I started to think different. I started uh, to be mentored by different people um, from different backgrounds, uh, different environments, and they started educating me in different things that I never got to experience growing up. Yeah. You know, financial literacy, just understanding 
business. I was always an entrepreneur, a hustler. So like having these mentors, they saw that in me and they took me under their wing and they kind of just made me their little prodigy. You know what I mean? And that's that's what I'm on now. I'm I'm trying to continue to grow and be big eventually one day, you know? That's and- Go for it. I was going to say, why the choice of uh, communications and film? Why not finance? Why not become a CPA or a, uh, I was never good a hedge at, fund manager? I was never good at math, so I didn't think I could do that stuff. Oh. But it's funny now because, like, now I do a lot of more business stuff. So I do be like, dang, I'm going to go back to school, get my master's in, like, business administration or something. Cause, That'd be awesome. Yeah, because I do want to get my master's. Um, I, That's a goal of mine. I do want to go and achieve. I think I, I know I could do it. It's just a matter of when am I going to have that time to do it. Mm. Uh, I got a mortgage now, so I can't, oh, you know. No can't, you breaks. Know, can't take no break paying the mortgage. Right. You know what I mean? So, uh, patience. Patience. Yeah. I know that time will come. And one of my mentors, very successful dude, bro. And shout out to him, Chip Ray. And um, he told me one day, he was like, you could go to school right now and get your master's in business, but you're already doing it. Mm-hmm. You're already in the industry. You know a lot of people. You already move with a lot of big people. Like, keep learning from them. Keep building your uh, resume. You know what I mean? Like, understand the game for what it is. So when you do go back to school, a lot of these terms come natural to you. A lot of these things are going to be normal to you. When you study, you're going to be like, oh, I already know that. You're going to only you know, trying to gain the things you don't know. So it's like you're filling in the spots at that point. Right. right. And he was like, then it'll be easier for you to just get your degree. And I was like, I don't know about the math part, but right. everything else, I'm pretty sure, you know, that's what he was referring to. Yeah, that's a cool way to look at it. I mean, it sounds like you got a lot out of your college experience. Would you recommend everybody go to college or? I mean, hey, man, get your education. I think it's, I think we live in a world where, like, it's it's just a, a form of validation at a corporate level. That's all I, I see it as. Um, I know a lot of people successful without degrees, but when they become successful, they go back and get degrees. So that should tell you something. So I'm not going to force you and say, hey, go to school or you're dumb. Nah, just do what you feel like is right. And when the time is right, go get it. You're never too old to go get an education. Ooh. Words of wisdom here on Dogstar, sitting down with Gabriel Mergo, picking the brain of a, a mastermind. And then, so we've got the journalism and then, like, media production that you do with G-Nice. Um, which, which was coming first? Were you shooting stuff first? Did you write your first uh, article first? Or how did, how did that side start developing out of the, the football career? Uh, that was going on in college. So, hey, hey man, I getting a lot of exclusive out of me. <laughs> uh, I was getting injured a lot, bro, in college. I broke my foot. What one mm. like Thanksgiving weekend, just playing basketball with some friends on with playing no. on my slippers. Oh, not oh. even on the football yeah, field. Yeah, just doing some dumb stuff, bro. And uh, I was playing defense, and one of my homies, I ain't gonna lie, he kind of shook me. Mm. And, and he, he kind of shook me. Now he didn't break my ankle. I broke my fifth metatarsal, mm. which is like the bone on the outside of your foot. Oh. And but my, because I was trying to defend him when I pushed my leg out, my slipper, my foot it just went like that. Mm. And I was like, oh, but I kept playing defense. I got mad because I, did, I did feel like a, a like a sting. Mm. But I was like, oh, I ain't gonna let like none of this like stop me. Yeah. So I kept I'm- playing defense, and everybody saw I was turning up. I snatched the ball out of him. I made a layup. Then I uh triple got, back flip dunk. Man, <laughs> you, know. you did everything. Uh got the ball back, hit a a two pointer. Oh. But then after that, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm done. Like my foot hurt. So boom, broke my foot that year, had to recover. And yeah, then the how next, long was that recovery period? No football. Sure, that year. It was it was and the snow started. So it was like during the snow time and all that. So I didn't get right to like the next spring. Mm. And then by the next spring, I get to it, I get all my stuff. And then boom, uh, I'm playing a few games, uh, and next thing I break my leg, Whoa. I break my uh my my bone on the outside of my foot right here. I forgot what that Fibia bone was called, fibula. Fibula. Yeah, I broke my fibula, <laughs> my fibula, whatever you say. Tibia fibula. Tibia fibula. I don't and, know. Uh, so boom, and then I was already taking film courses, and I remember one of my uh, professors, 
uh, told me, he said, hey, I really feel like you should pour more time into film than football. You, you're getting injured a lot in football. Like, I feel like you're really good at this. Put more time into this. And I was like, you know what? Um, you might be right, but, you know, football got me here and I respect the game. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to just finish it, you know? So I recovered again and I was about to play. And then that's when that whole COVID stuff happened. Oh, and just and, shut everything down. Yeah, but in the midst of, in the midst of me, you know, getting injured, I was already picking up the camera, starting to YouTube. I was a YouTuber. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of those videos aren't out there no more, but um, I, I put them, I private them. You know, is it uh, is it safe to say you were raised with YouTube? You kind of saw the growth of YouTube? Yeah, I was, I seen DD, bro, I was watching DDG and all them before they was DDG, like, when he was Daryl in Michigan, like in, in in Pontiac, you know, watching them videos early on. Yeah, yeah, I was watching all that stuff early on, and um, so I was I was doing the same thing, and like I wasn't going viral or nothing, but I was touching views though, mm. touching like thousands of views and stuff like that. One of my videos was like at sixty thousand, and I was like, bro, I could do this. But then, was, it, sorry, was it like cinematic stuff for film class, or was it more nah, journalistic, uh, similar variety show style like G Nice is today? It's or? just regular vlogging, bro. Sick. It was just like the regular cheap vlogging. I would edit on Final Cut Pro, throw it up. But it was just my personality. People yeah. loved mm. seeing my lifestyle, how I was doing stuff with my friends, being funny or whatnot. And um, but then I took an advanced film course. And changed the game. Changed the game. <laughs> I was in the class with some serious filmers, and you know, shout out to my brother Keith Sweet. One of he's from um, South Central. He's from Los Angeles. Sick. Um, he's actually working on the movie with Interscope and YG for the YG documentary that's going to come out. Wow! But he was already working on Paramount Plus. Like he was working with Paramount Studios while he was in school. He was already working with Netflix, and he was doing a whole lot of different stuff. He inspired me, man. He him and a few other filmers, obviously, but he, him in particular, he, he was, like, doing content that was cinematic. It was movie type. Mm. And I said, you know what? Like, if bro could do this type of stuff, like, I want to hone in on me doing, like, media stuff. Like, you, you know, bringing in the journalism stuff. Like, I was already testing the waters doing football interviews, and they were doing well. Sick. And I was like, you know what? It's, it's time to make this full-fledged, mm -hmm. go make this transition. So that's why I'm in the tra transition from G Nice TV to G Nice Entertainment, and G Nice TV was going to be the media outlet. And that was a time where my friends in the Illinois Empire they was making music, they were starting to uh, uh, pivot from sports to making music, mm -hmm. and some of the people in the city that I grew up listening to was starting to make a noise for themselves even more. So I was like, you know what? There's no outlet out here covering music. Yeah. So let me cover it. And let me you and then I took courses in college that teach you how to be a journal uh, a journalist and you know shout out to my professor Kelly Berg and Dana, um, man them courses that I was in with them social media classes, uh, how to write um, articles, how to write abstracts, all different type of stuff, bro. They taught me a lot, and um, they allowed me to be myself, and that's what I loved about being in their course. It made me happy to go to class. Cause they allowed me to be authentic, be myself, write whatever I wanted to write about. Um, as long as I followed what was in the rubric. The guidelines. Mm -hmm. You feel yeah. me? But they would help me touch it up and make it acceptable to get passed on and wow. stuff like that. That's huge. Yeah. And that and that inspired me to say, you know, like this is dope. Like people are investing, helping me because they see that I'm doing stuff with the media. So I gotta really push now, you know? I always have, I have a quote. Um, uh, if you're lazy, you're disrespecting those who invest in you. Mm. Yeah. Ooh, that, I mean, you're full of wisdom from the, uh, you know, the eloquent statement to a simple reminder like that. I, I love, I love, uh, being able to pick your brain. Thank you again for, yeah, no problem. for sitting down. We got to take a break here. In about one minute and 40 seconds. Yeah. So the G9, how did that evolve? So sports interviews and then it was music interviews? Yeah. yeah. It was mainly just them two right now and um, entertainers, like influencers and stuff too. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be doing more stuff in the future. Just right now we're building on that and trying to push that to the next level.
And I'd just settle on the name G Nice, TV G Nice Entertainment. Oh, man. <laughs> that shit is funny. Um, high school. My 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 um my ex girlfriend in high school, we was in a car one day and one night and we were thinking about a name to name the YouTube channel. And it was funny because we were just throwing ideas and I said, G nice. And she was like, Oh, that's hard. And then I was like, Yeah, that's what I'm naming, G Nice TV. Then I went home, like in the middle of the night, I made a YouTube channel. Hey. Yeah. And then I went to school the next day and I was like, look, I put I made a channel already. But yeah, it was just, you know, that's how it came about. I mean, somebody might get mad when they see that, but hey, that's just the truth. Like, you know, if y'all wanted to know, that's the truth. That's how the name came about. The universe was you know speaking I mean? to you, yeah, yeah. But uh, at the end of the day, like, how I defined it, like, when I came up with it, it was like, my name is Gabriel. You know, everybody be telling me I'm positive and I'm nice and stuff, so... I was like, G, nice. Like, that, the G for Gabriel, nice, because, you know, his positivity is nice. So, G, nice TV. We are sitting down with Mr. Murgo himself of G, nice TV. Make sure you check out G, nice TV on Instagram. Check us out, Dockside Podcast. We'll be right back. Bow wow. Bow wow. Bow wow. Welcome back to Dogstar. Sitting down with Gabriel Murgo, just Beauty. starting to talk about the G nice refinement. Would you call it? Yeah. Did you had? Did you take a break between like boom? This is the this is the new because you kept the channel name. Yeah. Um. Was there a was there a pause or what? Does was it just like gradual? I took a uh I took a pause and then. I kind of like started like thinking thinking about how I want to go about it, and then I feel like naturally I was just already testing out the stuff, and then from that point I said, you know what, I'm just gonna stick with it, and that's when the whole media thing kind of just started to come about. I didn't know everything right away. I, like if I would have known what I know now, back then when I was in school, oh my god, boy, I'd be up right now. <laughs> yeah, but it's. I was gonna ask, yeah, is there any any advice or any game you can give to some up and comers who uh who think that the task is daunting or that think like, oh, I'm only getting twenty views, I'm only getting ten view, you know, it's yeah. Any advice you can give them? I mean, without giving away the secret sauce. Yeah, I mean, it ain't really no secret. It's just you gotta stay disciplined, dedicated, and consistent. Uh, I feel like I had all those attributes, but when you're in college and you're making bread, you're having fun too. You know, and I, I I was I was pouring a lot of money to what I was doing, but I was also doing stuff for my friends. But I also was buying things I didn't need. Like I bought like I had a whole Impala I had bought, and then I had bought a whole Mustang cash. When I was like, dang, I could have just poured that into buying equipment early on, right. or buying, paying for trips to go back home to do production stuff early. But to to say the least, like at the end of the day. All that doesn't really matter. It's an experience. You learn from it. And also, uh, I'm on God's timing. So I feel like everything that happened from when I started up to now gradually had to happen the way it's supposed to, the way it was it played out, because it taught me things along the way to understand how to go about my mission. You know what I mean? So that's huge. Was there any, can you think of a moment in those early days or maybe if you were like, am I going to keep doing this or not? Like a moment or a story where you're like, I'm definitely doing this. Man, shout out to uh, Lil Reese. <laughs> I did the interview with Lil Reese. Yeah. Um, bro, I was at work. I used to work like as a PCA, paraprofessional, all that stuff. Oh, so when I was in school and um, a little bit after too, but. I was working at uh, this uh, client's house in particularly in St. Cloud. And I had reached out to Lil Reese like a whole year before that, like just like shooting my shot on some like, hey, let's, let's, let's work one day. And this is early when I'm like still learning how to write scripts and doing all that stuff. So like I had a script for him, but it was still like, I was still learning how to get comfortable doing the interviews with it and stuff. But um, I reached out to him, and then one day he hits me up at work randomly. Hey, this is my number. Hit me. I text him like, Lorice. Then he FaceTime me. I'm at work, bro. I'm like, hold on. This this Lorice? And uh, 
<laughs> he FaceTimed me and answered the phone. It was him, bro. What? Yeah, it was him. What? And, and he was like, yeah, it's good. Let's do the interview. A year later. Now, mind you, he just got shot and survived. No. I was the first person to do an interview with Lil Reese when he got back, when he recovered. Now, where I effed up was I posted a picture when, when I went to his house in Chicago. I had posted the, the same day, and that made all the media sources tap in. And Whoa. one one person, I, I think, I ain't going to say his, his social media, but he he I think he had reached out to him. He flew him out to Vegas, and then he did an interview. He, he released it before me, mm -hmm. and his video went viral. So mine's did numbers. Yeah. And it was a great interview. You can even look at the comments, bro. I was happy because people were like, bro, we need more people doing interviews like this. Mm -hmm. Like, this dude's not on no op stuff. He, it was like all positive uh, right. messages. And one in particular, man, if this guy would have dropped this video before the other interview, this one would have went viral. Wow. And I was like, that's when I knew, that's when I started learning about PR and marketing. Mm. Like, knowing how to just hold your stuff and then put it on a rollout when you're ready to have everything, sh you know, shooting. Because when you tease some, that could be big for you. Somebody could go and just do it right there, too. Right. You know, so I know that there's some artists who uh, feel the same way. When I when mm -hmm. they tap into creativity, I got to record this song before Righteous Across Town records the oh, same man. vibe. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. People who are so at the top of their game in any in any profession. I yep. think it's very similar. Yep. So yeah, that moment, did the interview, went to Chicago. I was still in school. It was, it was like Easter break or something. What? I drove all the way to Chicago, came back. I, I stayed over there for like a night, came back. And um, How long a drive is that? I think it was like six, six, seven hours. Oh my God. Yeah. I yeah. mean, starting from St. Cloud. Yeah, so. dang. So uh, that moment was like, yo, I just did Lil Reese. Like, middle school, bro, me and my homies was listening to Chief Keef, Lil Reese, that whole, come, like, that whole Chirac era. Yeah. Boy, all my homies back home, bro, you just got with the Grim Reaper. Like, mm -hmm. that's crazy. And it was just like, yo, like, I'm going to solidify my name in this game. Yeah. Like, I'm going to be one of them media personalities, one of them platforms that's going to be respected because I feel like nobody doing it the way I'm doing it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm I'm putting out like I'm putting out digital web series like stuff I was inspired by. Um, if y'all know me, I'm famous with the rag, bro. Like mm -hmm. I sweat so much, my friends know me. If you don't see me with a towel, something's wrong with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, like I grew up watching Vice Media Complex, yeah. getting inspired by the 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 structure of how things were put out, the 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 entertaining creative segments and dope content people would put and make it production like making it like dope for people to see like that was what i wanted to do and that, that that's what i feel like i'm doing with the come up series the what's the deal series the point of view series yeah. the you heard me podcast mm -hmm. like i'm creating my own netflix near yeah. within the platform of g nice entertainment the umbrella you, the umbrella yeah you got different content you could watch within the platform they all have a different taste a different flair different tier of artists point of view is all sports you got the come up what's the deal that's all hip-hop music it's not just hip-hop too like i want to do rock and roll mm -hmm. i want to do pop you know what i mean like i want to do all that stuff and um you just get you get a different taste of stuff and um i don't have to put myself in a box to do content i get out of my shell and get to be creative to create different types of feel and things like that. So that's sweet. And then yeah, had doing the series stuff is definitely very unique. And then the consistency that you yep. do uh, put stuff out is sets you apart, sets you above, uh, ahead above the rest. It's Hell yeah. uh, one man can only do so much. Mm. What can you tell us about uh, your early collaborators or the difficulty of teaming up versus trying to do it all yourself? Um. Shout out to the people along the way that help me and support me and, you know, ask for no money because they know that this game, you know, I, people think because you're doing something, you're just balling. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, nah, like, I pour a lot of my money into this. So uh, 
for the people that do support and help me, like my friends like Jalen, uh, Elizabeth, Eddie from Hussy PR, to my cousin Aaron, uh, Get It Rogers, recording artist, dope. Y'all need to tap in with him. Um, early on, him even putting in, like, he's an artist, he's a star, but he'll get, get behind a camera and record me. Wow. You know what I mean? Wow. So, like, that's the, the level of support we have for each other. Like, we, we want to see each other win. So he not going to feel like, man, like, I'm because some people feel some type of way when they're behind a the camera, you're a mm -hmm. cameraman. Like, I'm not going to be on the camera. Like, I'm not going to record you. And it's like, bro, it's not like that. Like, mm -hmm. we just need to film content. Like, yeah. so it's dope to have friends that really care for you and want to help you and support you. Jalen, like I said, he's one of them that is always taking the camera out when we go somewhere. Um, and back home, my cousin Austin, early on, he was doing it for me. So, yeah, and to everybody else along the way, you know, shout out to y'all too. But it's it's a grind, you know. So whenever I do my collabs, uh, they're they're really dope, and I really appreciate them because you know you get some teamwork involved. You know, everything not on you. You get to split the work, and it's fun working with people, seeing their perspective, how they think, what ideas they bring to the table, and stuff like that. Yeah, what uh, attributes do you look for in a collaborator? Um, not no idea is a stupid idea. Mm. I learned that being an entrepreneur, uh, in East Scholars, a program I took in college. Uh, one of my professors, Paul Marsnick, he used to say that not one idea is a dumb idea. So right on the wall, mm. and that's how I feel with being a creator. Like being a creator, like sometimes I say some of the dumbest stuff. Behind the camera, like closed doors, like we should do this. My mom be looking at me like, "Bro, you stupid." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, "You never know. Nobody's doing it." Right. Like, or maybe that thing that you say will spark something in my brain to think yeah. about it differently. Yeah, it's just it's just a matter of getting the the creative creative creativeness flowing. Yeah, but um, not yeah. following trends, just trusting your your new ideas and following through. It sounds like. Yeah. Do you see any trends in the uh the media world? The like the, cause it's it's more definitely YouTubers have not like slowed down being famous yeah. since they started being famous. Like, do you see any trends with like shows or like maybe the formats of shows that are? Yeah. Um. I was already thinking the way I was thinking, how everything's playing out now. Mm. Like, when I was a sophomore in college, I had already started the What's the Deal series. You feel me? I already had the You Heard Me podcast. Right. The Come Up series didn't come to, like, my junior, senior year. But okay. in, that, in that time, that's when No Jumper started from No... Went, went from No Jumper to start creating its shows within the platform. Mm -hmm. And I was telling my homies, like, you see what Adam's doing? Bro, I'm already on that. It's just I'm not big for people to see it, mm -hmm. you know? And now, look at now. Everybody's doing that. You know, people, you know shout out to uh, AD and uh, T-Rail and Duno from Back on Fig and Fig Munity and all them, Ace Blaze Pun, the, you know, uh, all those all those podcasts in the West Coast, they kind of took that formula and they started doing it with their own uh, platform, creating a different series within their platform, putting their friends on and mm. stuff like that. I was already trying to do that early on. It's just that it's hard to find people that really want to do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I kind of just uh, went from doing the podcast, being on the camera with people, and said, okay, I'm going to create shows and be behind the scenes and just capture yeah, the entertainer. You had uh, mentioned uh, earlier giving back to your community, spreading that love, spreading that wealth when the love and the wealth comes. Right. I want to talk about this upcoming show at Seventh Street Entry. Oh, speaking bro. of giving back, hosting it, co-hosting, I believe. Yeah, songs to live by. The experience oh, is happening. June the uh, kid, Ace P yeah. is about to go. Damn. August August nineteenth <laughs> at the Seventh Street. Man, uh, hosted by Mergo and Poetic Mama. Yeah, shout out to um, Poetic Mama. Soul two dots spinning, and then it's yeah the songs to live by album, mm -hmm. which is Ace P, June the Kid from Basement S Game, special guests Nakara Forge, um, Kaleem the, the Dream, 
and Righteous MC. Oh, but then it's special Stop. special performances. What? Yeah, exactly. Juice Lord, Nucky, Seiku, Bushido Chop, and Vinnie Crooks. Oh my god. Yeah. It's, it's That's I a was, sick lineup. It's out of control. It's I, out of control. And I assume you're looking forward to it. Oh yeah. Like I've already known I've already worked with some of the artists on that list. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Doing G Nice content. My um with the first rollout from the Midwest. And then a lot of the other artists on there, I've already known them for a year, just through passing, meeting them through people and going to the event, supporting them. Um, so we're about to get some stuff now going too. So, you know, stay on the lookout for that. Uh, but I'm excited for this show, man, because, you know, um, Ace, I was in, I think I was, before I was going to go to Cali, Ace P just hit me. He was like, hey, um, I want to talk to you about something. I said, what's up? He was like, me and June got this show um, on 7th Street, you know, entry. Yeah. Um, and we want you to host it. I was just like, hold on. Wow. We're like, what? Uh, 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 at first, I was me? like, me? <laughs> like, I'm from the West Coast. Like, nobody really know me out here like that unless I'm, unless they're interested on the platform for what they see, uh, what other people share, whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, so I was like, I don't know if I, I'll be the right person for this because there's a, I know a lot of other people out here that's also like in the, in their hosting bag right. that got a little bit more respect, credibility out here. And um, and so when he had hit me up, he was like, well, it's going to be you and this other, you know, this other female named Poetic Mama, um, which I've seen her a few times in other events too. My mm-hmm. boy Juice Lord used to do uh, uh, these open mics and I've seen her a few times there. So I'm familiar with who she is. I don't know her personally, but not um, yet. Not yet. Yeah, but I'm, I'm excited and thrilled to work with her, you know, and um, everybody else that's a part of the the show. Uh, I've I got a chance to listen to all the artists f- over the last year and a half being in the Twin Cities, and man, I'm gonna be honest with y'all, bro. Like, it's crazy. Like, y'all got some talent out here. I mean, speaking of talent. That's all the time we got, man. We can't thank you again. Oh. I can't thank you enough for joining us here on Dog Stars. Enjoy the song, Sunny Babble, Fantastic Four. Bow oh, wow. Yo, I go to war when I get bored. No need to eat. Score. Take it by force, all I remember when I buried his corpse I'll be here for millenniums, put that right there on Harrison Ford See my Falcon got more traction than he can endorse Grim Reaper, time seeker, streets was always in form Victory come galore, about the life for you boys I don't do beef anymore, but I stretch my time to make sure That my Nina carry 10, that's more fantastic than 4 See this here is retribution, for those who ain't support the movement Ball carry skills away, I run it, I get more lucid, more in tune with it my inner self, cause I see more influence by the fact I'm the most slept on. Chick conclusion, I stick it in, she start to scream. Do for the doofus, I've been on the killer's brief for years. They study my maneuvers. You a chump, get your grimy hands up off my boot. A dying son, these plight tons can never be a nuisance. Fool, can't keep giving them classic after classic. Flow cold, they think that I'm the king of Atlantis. Oh no, my queen made out of gold, yours out of plastic. Me versus myself, that's when these titans get to clashing. The way I flip my moolah, you would think we did gymnastics. Pat my homes away, I throw. I keep completing passes We gon' spin the block and turn his friendly air to Casper The fuck you talking about? You cannot see me with this rap My God, mama called me Sunny She knew I would be a star Beyond hell of Bronx still Knew I'd always be in charge Bitch, I got some angels They be watching from above We ain't doing drive-bys We be doing walk-ups I respond with mm okay, Victory was flawless Don't put you on some skates And I ain't talking stardust In this city where I'm from I remain untouched Told that boy to pass it down, he can't hear from my blood. No, 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 can't hear from my blood.